Hello, it's Shawnee. Welcome back. So, it's early in the morning, and before I go pick up my groceries, I figured I would do a quick news stories video. Now, I don't wear makeup to go get groceries. Like, you can see I'm in my yoga sweatshirt to let everyone know that I do yoga, and just like some sweats, essentially. But I wanted to tell you these news stories and when I do news stories, I do my makeup, right? Okay. So I just want to do something simple. I'm going to use the Danessa Myricks Groundworks palette just for a really simple eye look. Speaking of doing yoga, um, I do a lot of yoga on the weekends. And in one class yesterday, this one guy, I feel like he was doing the most. Like, I don't want to judge his practice, but I'm judging it. Like... He, he was just doing too much, in my opinion. Um, like the, the instructor would be like, okay, lay on your back or something. And he would go into a full like headstand. I'm just like, why are you doing the most? Like every single pose, he was doing the most, in my opinion. I'm going to go in with the Makeup by Mario, um, Master Eye Prep and Set in the shade Deep. So anyway. The theme of today's video, wait for it, mushrooms. Who even knew that we would be here, that the theme of our video would be mushrooms? But it is, it is, okay. So I'm going to tell you the stories, I think, in level of severity, at least how I kind of have put them in my mind. So the first story is out of Ohio. I feel like maybe we don't know a lot about what's going on in Ohio, but I think a lot happens in Ohio. So one story says that someone called in a tip about some drogas at a house. Now, my theory is that this person maybe tried to buy some of these drogas and the person who you know the seller didn't give them a good deal or something and so they were like jokes on you gonna call it in that's my theory but the claremont county narcotics unit and the drug abuse resistance task force dart I really feel like they missed an opportunity to just say dare. Do you remember? I remember in school, that was like the thing, drug abuse resistance education. But anyway, maybe that's like copyrighted or something. So they did a joint investigation into the manufacturing and distribution of psilocybin mushrooms. Now those are the like, the, the mushrooms that people be the magic mushrooms. So they hear, I'm gonna go into the shade bark. They hear that somebody's about to move these mushrooms so that like for distribution, you know, I guess they're about to get their coins, right? And so they go to this house and they go in and this story is written so dramatically. There are a couple stories on it, but <laughs> This person said or wrote that, um, where is it? Okay. Agents became aware of a clandestine psilocybin laboratory. <laughs> I feel like this is an intern who's like, I'm gonna become a staff writer. I'm about to be real, like, I'm gonna use these big words. So they go to this house. They have a search warrant and they open the door and they find a sophisticated clandestine psilocybin mushroom laboratory. I felt like when you say laboratory, like Dexter's laboratory, because this is dramatic. And they find 503 pounds of psilocybin in this man's house. 503 pounds. And that equates to $800,000. Girl, so he was about to, <laughs> he was about to get paid. He's like, listen, um, grow, grow these mushrooms. 
into this clandestine, sophisticated laboratory. And now I'm about to move them. My question is, how do you move 503 pounds of mushrooms? What is the, what's the process? Are, are people going to come to the house and buy them like in, in, I don't, I don't know. How do you, I don't know. I'm not going to ask that. I don't, I don't know how these purchases work. I don't know where this young man, uh, was taking them, how he was taking them. Do you, do you like, do you get like a U-Haul truck or something or Penske or whatever? Like, I'm really curious, but anyway, the house it was at this young man's house Aaron he's 26 I admire his like business acumen I don't think it's okay though like I don't know how you came up with this Aaron but I feel like you could have not <laughs> contributed to you know the war on drugs but whatevs so Mr. Aaron has been charged with one count of illegal manufacture of drugs which is a felony first degree and additional charges and, sus and suspects will be submitted, you know, at a later date. So I'm gonna go into this shade, which is Harvest. So it seems like Aaron might have some friends that was helping him out, which I understand because, oops, yeah. Because how do you, how do you do all that yourself? Like, does he have staff? Um, it must take like all his time, right? And energy to manage this conglomerate because I don't know. I don't know the process, but he figured it out and he was like, this is what I'm going to do. But there's, there's like no way, right? That he could have like a, a regular job. I would assume he has to be at home tending to the shrooms. How do you tend to them? I don't know. Do they grow the same way as like regular mushrooms? How do you even get them to start the pro I don't know. I have like so many questions. <laughs> They're like calling Aaron and being like, sir, so like walk me through this. Um, but yeah, that's our that's our first story. Just like real straightforward and simple, right? Aaron Dunn did some stuff. I think one of his friends sold him out and now he's in jail on federal charges. Like, federal charges are, like, not good, y'all. They're just not. They're just not. Like, you don't, you don't want federal charges. First of all, you don't want charges, period. But if you're going to get them, you, you definitely want them to be, like, not federal. I'm looking for a brush. Okay, I'm going to use the, um, blurring bomb. Just... A little bit okay so next story this one you know we're amping up into like severity so that was Aaron 26 with his his little stash that's worth 800 I think it was like 805,000 I don't know how they came up with like the the five um so we're gonna rate that from one being no big deal to five being mm, that's bad. Considering that he is getting federal charges, um, like two point five, three, two point seven five. This is in comparison to the upcoming stories. Okay, so the next one is about a. 44 year old man you probably heard this one 44 year old man who is actually who was a pilot for Alaska Airlines I think his name is Jim so what I didn't know is that um pilots like off-duty pilots if they're going from like place to place they can sit in the jump seat in the cockpit of the plane which I didn't, I had no idea. I don't know why I would know that, but I really didn't know. Um, so Joe is sitting there, you know, chatting with the pilots. They're like, on this flight, it was going from like Washington to San Diego or no, San Francisco. Yeah. So he's just there with the pilot and co-pilot having a good old time, chatting it up, you know, just, just having 
you know, when you're with people who are in your industry or your career, you just, you just connect and you like to talk to them, right? So all of a sudden, Joe throws off his like headset that they be wearing and he says, I'm not okay. And he jumps up and he goes for the, the levers that essentially, if you like engage these levers, uh, the plane can become a glider. So I looked into that. A glider is where like the engine and stuff has been cut and the plane is gliding. And I feel like they make it sound a lot more like chill than it is. I don't want my plane to glide. Like, <laughs> cause to me, when you shut off, when you shut off the engines, maybe it does glide. I don't need to find out, but that seems just like a bad idea. Okay, so let me read you a bit more about what they were saying about Mr. Joe. So, well, that's another story. Okay. So, basically, all of a sudden, the they reported, the people in the flight reported a security threat. And they said that the fire suppression system, which is what he tried to turn off, it consists of a T handle for each engine. When pulled, a valve in the wing closes to shut off fuel to the engine. That don't sound good. That don't sound good. So apparently the co-pilot like grabs his wrists and there's a struggle. There's like a 30 second struggle to get him to like not try to kill everyone. And so they're they're calling like air traffic or whatever and they're like, there's an emergency. Um, we, we've subdued him and we want law enforcement on the ground when we land. So they had to divert the plane, right? They diver diverted it to Portland, I believe. And so while this is happening, the flight attendants and such get Joe and they walk him, they say peacefully to the back of the plane. He gets back there and he's like, you better put cuffs on me or else it's, it's not going to be good. I mean, thank you for letting us know, Joe, that you are planning other things, I guess. And you want to make sure that, that, you know, everyone is safe. So you're just letting us know to like tie you up. So they have like those flex cuffs, I guess. I, like, do they just carry those on on the flights? I don't know. I don't want to find out. I'm going back into Harvest for a little bit of bronzer. And so even with his hands cuffed, he tries to open the emergency door. Joe is just like, I'm just going to do everything. And so apparently one of the flight attendants like grabs his hands and tries to distract him with conversation because I guess, I don't know, he just wanted to talk to someone. And one of the flight attendants said that Mr. Joe said, I messed everything up. And he said that he tried to kill everybody. He said that he had just put 84 people's lives at risk, including his own. Well, you might have thought it was 84, Joe, but the charges that you got is 83. It's for 83 attempted murder charges. I guess they weren't worried about Joe. <laughs> they were like, Joe, we not counting you, honey, and the charges. There were no injuries and passengers were able to fly later to another, like get their flight somewhere else. And apparently the airline is reaching out to all of them individually. So people are like, you know how when something happens, the news people, they go to like their people's neighbors and their like kindergarten teacher to like find out, tell us about this person. So his neighbors are like, he seemed like a nice guy nothing abnormal he's a great father and husband and he he would have no intention of hurting anyone but how how many times are are we gonna say am i gonna say intent versus impact you might not have intended such joe but now we try we traumatized that's the impact 
Now, so Joe, he's he's been a pilot since 2001. He's been doing this for 20-some years. And I think he just became a captain or something like in 2018 or 2019. But they're like, there are no blemishes on his, um, his file. And he's completed his mandated FAA uh, medical certifications in accord accordance with regulatory requirements. And at no time was anything denied. And something else I learned, I think, I've only read this in one, one place, is that pilots over 40 have to do like, like mental health evaluations. <laughs> yeah, let's see. He has a first class medical certification, the highest level of medical certification awarded by the agency, which requires examinations every six months for pilots 40 and over. I'm wondering, how did they decide that? We're like, <laughs> they're like, um, once you hit 40, girl, it's all downhill. <laughs> Like, I feel like that's a little discriminatory. Discriminatory. So he was charged in Oregon um, a single count, 83 counts of attempted murder. He pleaded not guilty. And he's also charged separately in federal court with one count of interfe interfering with flight crew members and attendants. What did I tell you about federal court, y'all? That's not good, but that's, you, you messing with the Federal Aviation Association or whatever, that is definitely a federal crime. So, of course, Mr. Joe, he says that he was having a mental health crisis during the flight. So, here's the thing. Joe apparently has had, um depression for some people say for a while some people say for six months and then he had a friend who passed away which he believes sort of like amplified his depressive symptoms right the thing is joe before the flight like 48 hours before the flight he took some psilocybin he took some magic mushrooms allegedly the first time ever but then he also didn't sleep for 40 hours so he took these magic mushrooms about, you know, two days ago. And then he didn't sleep for 40 hours. Now, he's saying that he thought he was dreaming. He's saying that he thought he was dreaming. And I don't, I don't know how that relates to then, you know, like trying to take down a plane. I don't know. Like, I haven't had that experience of, like, dreaming and thinking that I need to take out a plane. I don't, I don't know. I'm going to go in with Sculpted for the brows. So, he was interviewed by the police and... Oh, Federal Aviation Administration. Asset Association. Yeah, basically, he's saying that he thought he was dreaming and I don't know why that that oh wrong thing my bad i don't know why that leads to trying to take down a plane yeah i don't know like that's kind of all we know right now and it seems like he feels really bad <laughs> he feels really bad for what he did he he says that he put everyone's life in danger like i'm guessing he's no longer a pilot um, with Alaska Airlines. Like, I don't think you can do that without having some sort of consequence and repercussion, you know? I don't, mm, I don't think that's going to happen. But I'm really starting to get concerned about all of these pilots. Remember, like, earlier in the summer, there was a story of the pilot who, he was just trying to go home, he was trying to get out of the parking lot, and the, the arm of the parking gate it was not working and so he got out of his car with an axe don't know why he's carrying an axe and he like beats <laughs> the arm to break it right 
and they had to come and like restrain him. I just feel like these pilots are not okay, y'all. There, I actually think there are a lot of industries where people are just not okay right now. Like in the medical field also with these pilots because isn't there like a shortage of pilots? So, you know, Joe's contributing to that and home dude with the ax as well, like two pilots down. But this one is, this one is, we don't know. So people were talking about, um, people were talking about whether or not the mushrooms would still be in his system, like 48 hours later. And there's one like doctor who's like, Probably not, but if this was his first time and depending on how much he took, like maybe there's some residual stuff in there that like is messing him up. And apparently the mushrooms can cause some like what looks like psychotic things to happen. But also everyone is like, he seemed fine getting on the plane. Um, he seemed okay. Uh, you know, he went through security and everything seemed fine. Now I'm going to go into tourmaline for a little bit of liner. He seemed fine. No concerns. You know, he was sitting and having a good old time with the pilot and the co-pilot in the cockpit. And... I don't know. I sort of think that whether he is deemed to have had some sort of mental health crisis or breakdown, I feel like that's going to determine how the case goes. I can't decide if it's better that he did have some sort of mental breakdown or not, because I sort of feel like if he did, that would really explain things, maybe. Maybe his charges, I don't know. Because then if he didn't, how do you, like, explain? I don't I don't think it's going to go well for, for Joe. I, I don't think it is. I don't, I don't know what happened to Joe. They're probably going to do a psychiatric evaluation. Because here's the thing. Like, I've, I've dealt with psychotic patients or clients like you you're not like in reality right and it can it can come on and I don't know <laughs> I really don't know Joe I hope you have a good lawyer sweetheart I think you need to hire one like a private lawyer Public defenders are amazing, but now you've got state and federal charges. It's not looking good for you, Joe. It's not looking good. I I feel kind of bad for him. Like, I would not want to be on that plane with Joe. I don't know. Do we need to have, like, a mental health professional at the front, you know, when you're getting on the plane? when you're boarding, just like asking everyone, have you took, have you taken your meds? Have you had any drugs in the past like two or three days? Um, what's your therapist number so that we can make sure to call them if, if need be? Um, where are you sitting? Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know, but we need to figure it out because I remember reading that like, it's not super easy or convenient for, um, pilots to get mental health treatment because if you get it you're ground grounded like you're not flying but then if you don't get it you have like these freak outs like I'm so glad that he wasn't the one flying the plane um I'm glad that there were two other people the pilot and co-pilot who could like subdue him I don't know y'all but that leads us to our final story. And this is actually an update. So remember a couple months ago, there was the Australian lady. I think her name is Erin. There's another Erin. There, there's this Australian, Australian lady who 
had a bit of a mishap. So if you don't remember the story, there was this lady, I think she's 49, and she had this lunch for her like former in-laws. So her and her husband are going through a separation. I don't know if they're quite divorced yet, but Erin wanted to have her ex-in-laws, I guess, and um, the in-laws like sister come in and have lunch. Now there was one story that was like, she wanted to make sure that they could still have a relationship with the kids. There's another story that they were going to discuss the, you know, what's going on between the, the spouses. But her, her estranged husband was supposed to come to the lunch, but he didn't. So basically at the lunch, were his parents and his aunt and uncle. So Miss Erin decides she's gonna cook a nice little meal and she makes beef wellington. Now I didn't know quite what was in beef wellington but some of y'all have helped me figure out what is in there. And the the story is that Aaron like dished out everybody's food on a plate and was like go ahead for you know my four dinner guests apparently she had some which I'm not convinced of and then later in the day she reports that she gave her kids some of this beef wellington but that she she like took the mushrooms out because they don't have like mushrooms but we're gonna come back to that so they eat the food they're having a good old time you know discussing everything so glad that they can continue to be in the lives of their grandkids and then they go home all of a sudden they are sick like sick as dogs i really don't know what that means but i'm gonna look it up because we all just use that phrase sick as dogs and so they go to the hospital and now these are older folks, like the youngest in the group is 66, right? But still, you like 66 is not old. Like you could still be, you know, jumping and jiving. So they go to the hospital. They're in there for like a week. During, in that week, three of them die. So the, the in-laws, the, the mother and father-in-law and the mother-in-law's sister, they die. Now one is holding on, Ian. He's the husband of the mother-in-law's sister, okay? Ian is in hospital for like three months. Now this happened on July 29th, which is my birthday and also the day I went to see Kelly Clarkson, but that has nothing to do with this story. So Ian is in hospital for like three months. He needs like a liver transplant. Like, I think Ian is like 68. So like, that's not like, that's not good that you have like all of the things in your body shutting down, especially as a 68 year old, like your body has been working for 68 years. Like this is not the time to like, you know, put it through the ringer. But the idea, what they think happened, was that it was the mushrooms. Now, let me tell you why they think that. It's for people who don't know the story. So, apparently, the mushrooms were these death cap mushrooms. And those are highly toxic. Like, you could have a little bit of it and just fall out and be dead. So Miss Erin, remember, she made the beef wellington and she had mushrooms up in there, right? So three out of the four people die and Erin's like, oh my gosh, I don't know what happened. I would never hurt my in-laws. Oh, almost dropped my coffee. Oh my gosh, like, and so they're like, well, Miss Erin, where, where did you get these mushrooms? And she's like, I definitely got them at this Asian market. Well, Miss Erin, where's the market? I don't know. What's the name of the market? I don't know. Okay, Erin. But what we also learned was that her estranged husband, and I'm wondering if this is why they estranged, he ate something that Miss Erin had cooked, and he was in a coma for like 14 days. And they were like, come say goodbye to your son. So Miss Erin, every time somebody eat up at your house, they end up in the ICU. 
And she said that she had some of the food and she had like a little tummy ache and that her kids had some, but she took the mushrooms out. But what I had learned from y'all is that you like it's baked into the, the puff page pastry, like it's baked into the beef Wellington. So you can't like, like, how would you take the mushrooms out? Even if you picked out every single mushroom, I would assume that the mushroom essence was still in there, like the toxins, right? And then are you just putting like whole like sliced mushrooms in there? Are you chopping them up? I don't know. I don't know. But Miss Erin says that, you know, she took the mushrooms out. Her kids were conveniently at the movies when all of this was happening. And everybody, I feel like the Australians are nice because they're like, mm, we kind of think you did this. I feel like in America, we'd be like, girl, you know, you did it. Like everybody ate the same thing and, and and like most of them have passed away so recently the update is that miss Erin has been arrested and you know why because mr ian done woke up baby mr ian was like i've been in this coma thing for three months and now I'm coming out of it and I'm coming for you, Aaron. So this man wakes up and like his wife has died and his brother and sister-in-law have died. When I tell you I will be coming so hard for Aaron, like if I'm 68, maybe I can't, maybe I can't fight her, but I'm gonna hire somebody to fight you, Aaron. Because we all ate the same thing and only one of us came out of it. Okay, so let me tell you what she's been charged with. She's charged with three counts of murder and five of attempted murder. I don't know how that works. Uh, she didn't enter any pleas or apply to re be released on bail. Listen, y'all. Ian's a pastor. Pastor Ian is a Baptist pastor and he was critically ill and in that hospital for a long, long time. Pastor Ian. So they said that, you know, the estranged husband had like similar experiences. He was supposed to come to the lunch. I don't know. Did Ian have to drop out at the last time? I mean, not Ian, the husband, whatever his name is, Simon. Did Simon have to drop out at the last time, the last minute? Did... But why wouldn't Simon tell his parents, like, y'all, don't eat nothing up at Aaron's house. Don't eat nothing off her. Why he let them go? Maybe he thought that, maybe he thought that she wouldn't do anything. But Aaron seemed like she is petty and she is vindictive. The maximum sentence for murder is life imprisonment. And for attempted murder is 25 years in prison. Aaron, you about to lose custody of them babies. So the prosecutor, Mr. Ellis, he would like the case to be adjourned for 20 weeks. That's a long time, sir. What's that, like half a year? But he wants to let police have time to like search everything. Yeah, so she's, she's said, I said her name was Patterson, it's Peterson. She said that she's devastated. I love them. I can't believe that this has happened and I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, but an apology is not enough, babes. <laughs> not enough. So also, she said that she ate the mushrooms and she had stomach pains and diarrhea. That's real different from like dying. Aaron, you probably had that stomach ache and diarrhea because you was nervous and anxious about what you about to do. So yes, so yes, girl. Aaron has finally been charged. That's the update, y'all. Aaron has finally been charged. We've been waiting for three months. And if you see Mr. Ian, Pastor Ian, like, I think I saw this video of him, like, walking into the courtroom with someone. And Pastor Ian has, like, a walker now. But let me tell you something. Pastor Ian came in sharp, okay? He had his, like, suit on. Who I just... 
Oh, I can't wait for Pastor Ian to tell what happened because he's the only other person who knows. He's the only other person who knows what happened. And I hope he remembers every single last bit of information. Because they've been keeping, Pastor Ian came out the coma about two weeks ago. They've been keep keeping Pastor Ian like real safe. You know, I th I'm guessing he has like a police, you know, whatever it is that where they protecting you, police protection. I mean, I would be at that man's bedside with a notepad and a recorder because <laughs> Pastor Ian, start from the beginning, girl. Like, I, we want to know every single thing. And see, I don't think Erin, Miss Erin didn't think about that. I don't think she thought that any of these older folks would make it. Because only a little bit can, like, take you out. And she gave them a whole beef wellington of it. Y'all. Miss Erin, that's the thing. Oh, the other thing. How did I leave this the most important? Y'all, her friends are saying Erin's a good old forager of, like, mushrooms. So she goes out in the, in the wild and, like, forages for vegetation. So she should, like, know that these mushrooms are, like, toxic and deadly. Now, if I had gone out to forage for things, I wouldn't know. Girl, I'd probably put all kinds of toxins in your fruit, in your food. But Miss Erin knows, okay? She also had like a food dehydrator because she said that she had gotten the, the dehydrated mushrooms from the Asian market that she can't find or know the name of. But she had her own food dehydrator and she tossed that mess. She threw it out. She said that she threw it away because... She thought her husband would blame her for everything that happened. But Miss Erin, if you didn't do nothing, why are you getting rid of the, the food dehydrator? Why are you trying to say it's an Asian market? That felt real racist to me. And it just don't look good for Miss Erin. Girl, you're a forager of vegetation. I don't know if that's what it's called. You're a forager, ma'am. You would know what these death cap mushrooms look like. They they don't even sell them in the stores. You can't get these death cap mushrooms in the stores. You have to like go looking for them, girl. Like these aren't just, you know, in aisle 20 with all the other like produce. They're not there. And I don't know. I Y'all, what do you think? I think most of us believe that Miss Erin... Went ahead and took those people out. And I'm thinking that she thought that she was going to take Simon out too, her estranged husband. I think that's what she thought. And all of a sudden, he didn't come to the thing, the lunch. But I'm wondering too, if Simon had come, would she have, would it have been less mushrooms in each portion that's the other thing see she took the food out for these people now you know um i think a lot of people do that like let me take your food out you know just sit relax have a glass of wine but now i'm like if i'm coming to your house i'm like you go ahead and eat from the pot real quick first go ahead take take a couple bites because <laughs> you can't trust nobody these days Aaron. I wonder what her kids think. I wonder if her kids are like, oh, mama. Like, we about to go live with daddy because you going to prison, girl. Like, these some serious charges. I don't know what they could say. Whoever is going to be her, her lawyer, first of all, I'm guessing she's going to have a public defender. They are probably sitting there real pissed. Like, now I got to go defend this girl. And we know she did it. Like, what is your defense strategy? What is your strategy? What are you going to say? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I have no business being in the legal profession. But I can't think of nothing that you would say. At least with uh, with uh, Joe, the pilot, you could be like, well, he, he had a mental health event. You know, there's no real... 
defense for the the other Aaron, the the twenty six year old who had the drugs, like that's pretty straightforward, sir. Unless he's like, I don't even live there. You know what I mean? But Miss Aaron, girl, I don't know what you gonna say. But I know a lot of us have been thinking from jump that she poisoned those people. But then I'm also thinking like, did she not get any of the, maybe she cut the mushrooms and stuff with gloves or whatever. Like, because how did she do that? I don't know y'all, it doesn't look good for Miss Erin. So those are the mushroom stories, girl. Let me know what you're thinking. I'm really curious about the pilot and Miss Aaron. Like we already know 26 year old Aaron, like he has his federal charges, girl, you're not gonna get out of that. But these other two, I'm really like, this doesn't look good for you. Let me know what you think. I'll probably have some more new stories throughout the week. Um, Cause girl, what are these teachers in Missouri doing? <laughs> I have a story for you about that. Anyway, let me go get these groceries and, oh, this is the face with the Denise Myricks groundwork palette. I feel like people have not been talking about this palette ever since it came out. I see a couple of people using it, but I'm finding it so helpful and handy, right? Like I just used one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, four of the shades. I thought I used five. Four of the shades to do this simple, easy thing that I've got going on here. I think her blurring balm stuff is amazing. And now I think this is amazing too. She did a great job. Very innovative. Okay. Hopefully some of this was helpful. And I also hope that you are continuing to take care of yourself. Um, feel free to like the video. Also, I would love it if you subscribe to the channel. And I want to know, leave in the comments, girl. So we gave initial Erin 2.5, 2.75. I think I give pilot Erin a four, about a four. Miss Erin, she's five plus in terms of severity. But let me know your ratings because I can actually put all of them at five. So let me know on a scale of not that bad to horrendous, heinous craziness. One is not that bad, five is the crazy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.